hands that shed innocent blood. Uh, these are uh, by no means an easy message to, to preach. In fact, it's very difficult. As I preach today, um, you're going to see the image of a little baby on the screen and a heartbeat. And every 37 seconds, a new image will come up. And every 37 seconds, a baby's life is murdered in America. So just as a, a vivid reminder, however, at the same time, I didn't feel that we need to be graphic, um, depict some of the atrocities that go on in the abortion clinics across America and, uh, and reveal that stuff. I think that we all know what happens. Now, I also want to preface it with this, that in a crowd of this size and those that are watching online, it's very possible there's someone here who has shed innocent blood. Um, it's very possible. I certainly don't want you to raise your hand. But this is not a message to convict someone who's done something. It is, it is not my job to condemn. It is God's job to convict. And through conviction, bring restoration, healing, and forgiveness. It is not that someone here would begin to feel guilt for something you did. Maybe it was at a time in your life, and there's no justification for murder, we know that, but it might have been at a time in your life when, when you were going through something that, that you just were not thinking straight. You were influenced by someone else, or the scenario, whatever circumstance it was, led you to make a decision that was wrong. Not only wrong, because we were famous in America, and even in politics, and even in our courtrooms, and in legal uh, wording of certain things. We're famous for putting words on things and calling them names, but the names don't really do it justice, and by justice I simply mean that they're not a true picture of what really happens. Abortion is not an exciting word to talk about, but it really doesn't even depict what's happening. The reality is it should be called just murder. It's not killing. Killing is different. Today, people will die on the highways in America in very tragic automobile accidents, and they will be killed, but it will be by accident. It will be by a, 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 a circumstance that we wish should not have happened. We don't want to see anything bad happen to anyone. But abortion is not killing someone. Abortion is murder. And the very root of abortion, it's very important we understand this. And, and while I'm saying this, can I, just, can I just say something? I don't know that I've pastored a church. I've pastored larger churches than this is right now and, 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 and churches this size. And, and I don't know that I've ever seen a church that fosters and adopts more children than this church. In fact, we're, we're, we're launching, uh, I don't know what we'll call it, but we're, we're kicking off a, 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 a group that can just gather together for those that foster children and those that adopt children and maybe even those that want to adopt children just as an encouragement group uh, and a resource right here in the ministry we're going to be having that so if that's of interest to you, you can, you can, we'll have a sign up coming soon and you can be involved in that. Hands that shed innocent blood. One of the most tragic of the sins, of the seven sins that God talks about, is it, and, and all of them really have something to do with this, but every one of these seven sins, did you notice they all hurt someone else? They hurt us because we commit them if we committed them, but they hurt other people. If you lie, you hurt other people. If you have pride, you hurt other people. But this one just kind of rises to the top in that injustice of what's happening across America today because shedding the innocent blood of a child, of an unborn, of an infant, but it doesn't really just encapsulate that person. There are people that are innocent that are murdered. There was a recent shooting in the city of Chicago. Well, there's hundreds of shootings in the city of Chicago. But there was a recent shooting of a city in, in, of, of the city in Chicago, of the city of Chicago, where a young girl was just sitting in the living room of her home, and a bullet pierced the side of the home and went through the door and killed that precious little life. The shedding of innocent blood. 
There's innocent blood that's been shed on battlefields of war. World War I, II, the Korean War, Iraq, Vietnam, uh, um, the Middle East, Jerusalem, all of the bloody battles that have taken place. There are innocent lives that have been shed. Murder is the name of, of what we call it. Now, now, I'll get into the whole um, battle because we often have to fight for the freedom of a nation and, and, I, and, I, and I thank God that we're in a nation where men and women weren't afraid to go onto the front lines of battle and fight for this nation, and fight for our freedom and, and that's not it. If you had to defend your little one, you might have to take a life to save a life. That's not what we're talking about today. But what you put your money in, you support. Watch the products that you buy. Make sure it's not companies that support pro-abortion pro agendas. You want to stop someone? There's ways to stop someone. You can pray. You can placard abortion clinics. You can do all of those things. But there's other ways. Cut them off. Starve them by attrition. You want to lose weight? Stop eating. You want to sh cut someone off? Stop feeding the very thing that's making them bigger. So, so... When you buy their products, whatever companies they are, and I don't even know, I know there's some out there, but when you buy their products, if a portion of their product is going, their proceeds goes to support on an agenda of abortion, then just stop buying their product. We grew up in, we, we grew up in, uh, you know, we're a marketing family. We know how to market things. Our whole family knows how to market things. And so we, we know that, that marketing is only as effective as the people that will buy your product. And so subliminally, subtly, they put things in there or they have hidden agendas. So how do you win? Stop buying their product. Don't vote for the people that are pro things that are against the word of God. If it's against the Bible, uh, let me just say it like this. If God hates it, we hate it. Just say, does God hate? People say, does God hate? Does God hate? Does God hate? I just read to you Proverbs chapter 6 that said God hates. God hates these sins. And if God hates these sins, then we hate these sins. Amen? Come on. Somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you for those four amens. It's not the termination of a pregnancy. It's not, a, it's not even an abortion. It is murder. It is murder in the, in the womb of a mother. And if some had their way, it would be even more tragic than that. But God hates the shedding of innocent blood. And if God hates it, so do we. As a church, we hate it. As a Christian, we hate it. In God's view, let me give you a few points real quick. In God's view, when he looks at life, what God looks at when he sees life is he sees blood. Because the life is in the blood. The Bible says in Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11 that the life of the flesh is in the blood. That the blood is what gives life. And so it's the beginning. A baby in the womb of its mother at the point of its heartbeat is already pumping blood. But some would say, well, then that's when life begins. Wrong. Life begins even before that. In fact, if you want to go Bible here with me for just a moment, which we do, then let's go back into the Old Testament. That Psalm 139, verse 14, 15, and 16, the Bible says God saw everything about us even before we were developed. There is not a man on the planet or a woman or a doctor or a physician or a medical professional that can give you the absolute time that life begins. Because if God says life even begins, even before a sperm meets an egg, even before conception, then God is the one. The Bible says God is the giver of life and God is the taker of life. And there's not a man or woman on the planet that has the right to take a life. Only God and God does not give permission. He hates hands that shed innocent blood. And the word tells us that life begins uh, you know, at, at, the, at, the, at, the, at the, the mindset of God, even before you were born in your mother's womb or, or conceived in your mother's womb. Isaiah said it this way in Isaiah 44, verse 24. He formed you from the womb. He makes all things. If God is making us and forming us and fashioning in, this, in, in the womb, who on this world, on this planet, has the right to say when a man or woman or a physician can take a life? It's murder. You can't even get pregnant unless God allows it to happen. God allows everything to happen. 
I don't care what it is, it's God. God has his fingerprint all over this world on every life, both the righteous and the unrighteous. He knows all things. He makes all things, and God made you, and God made me. Do you believe that? And so circumstances should not dictate decisions. Well, I think I'll terminate a pregnancy because it came at an inconvenient time in my life. That's not a reason to terminate a pregnancy. In fact, the Bible gives us no valid reason to ever take a life. In that manner. Jeremiah chapter 1. The Bible says before I formed thee in the womb I knew you. Before I even begin to form you. I knew you. Before anything. When you were being created. When you were being born. Before you were born God knew you. That's how specific God is. When, when, when he was making this world. He knew us. Who did the forming? Man didn't form us. We're not a biological accident developed in a test tube somewhere. We're not something that just was created in a laboratory. We're created by the hand of God. Divinely designed, the blueprint before a building ever goes up, before a, a pier ever goes into the ground, the blueprint and the architecture is already before God, and he already knew everyone. He knew you'd be here today. Amen? He knew where you'd sit today. He knew what parking spot you'd park in. He knew what you'd eat for breakfast before you got out of bed if you ate breakfast. He knew the chair you would sit in. But not only that, God knew the animal that would be sheared to, 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 to weave the fabric that, that of the material you're sitting on. Oh, I'm losing some of you, but it's true. God knew the very mountain that, that someone would go into and extract the iron ore that would be melted down to form and fashion the legs on the chair that you're sitting on this morning. That's how much God knows. God knew you a knew hundred years before you were ever born, and he knew you the moment you were born, and God is the maker of all things. So who formed you? God did. And if God formed you, then there's not a person on earth that has the right to try to take you out. Abortion is murder. God knows it and we know it. God, the Bible says, ordained you before you were born, sanctified you before you were born. And Job said in Job 31, verse 15, did not he who made me in the womb make, make you know, the creator? He's the one who formed and fashioned us inside the womb of our mothers. Amen. So be careful. Be ca if, you're, if you use birth control, be careful what kind of birth control you use. And I'll tell you why. Because, that's a, that's a no man's land. But there are some that abort a fertilized egg. And that's every bit as wrong as aborting a baby at seven months. So be careful what, what you do there. I don't have time to go into all of that. But the Bible says there's penalties. There's a price to pay for shedding innocent blood. In Psalm 106, verse 37 through 39, the Bible says, Because they were offering their, God, their babies to gods of Moloch in the Old Testament, they were sacrificing their children, throwing them in the river and throwing them in the fire. Yes, in the Old Testament of your Bible. The devil was very much at work back then as he is at work today. And he said in Psalm 106, 37 through 39, that the land is polluted and defiled with the shedding of innocent blood. If you really want to go down there for just a little bit more, let me tell you something. That when a vile world like we're living in today, the sinful, uh, tragic things that are going on in the world, the blood that has been shed in America on, on the, every little ab aborted and murdered baby that never saw the light of day, the blood of those children uh, has gone into the ground. Just like Cain and Abel, when Cain slew his brother Abel, the Bible says, and the blood of Abel cried forth from the ground. And even so today, if you're wondering why America is in the situation it is today, why the church has been weak and emaciated and anemic and hasn't been operating, why we're seeing tragic death and loss and suffering and plagues and... and, and uh, uh, what do you call them? pandemics and all of these why do you think that happens because when the gates are down the enemy comes in and when the, a, a nation like America allows the murder of innocent babies it takes down the, the wall of protection around our nation and it allows the enemy to come in now let me go a little bit farther for just a moment some of you may have a hard time with this but you look at the world and the increase of pestilence and earthquakes and famine and violence and, and tornadoes and hurricanes and floods 
floods, all that's going on, all of those things. There is something crying forth from the ground in America today that is not that the earth is groaning. The earth is crying, church. The earth, even the earth, even the earth is crying out and, and because of the blood of those innocent lives that has been shed. And God, you ready for this? God said in Amos chapter 7, he said, I am bringing a divine plumb line. I am bringing a plumb line. The plumb line is what exposes error. The plumb line. Now we got laser levels and water levels and bubble levels. But the plumb line is what they used in that day. They still use it in building today. Amen. And the plumb line is what exposes error. The plumb line. Are you with me today? The plumb line. Because God hates mixture. God hates the dilution of sin in the church. God, that's why we're dealing with the seven sins God hates. Because if judgment must begin, let it first begin where? Not at the strip club down the street. Not at the tarot card place next door. Not at the local bar where they're getting drunk on Friday night. If judgment must begin, let it first begin in the house of God. So the house of God can get on fire. So the house of God can get holy again. So the house of God can get righteous again. So all the phonies can get right with God. So all the fakes and all the rainy day Christians. Is this too much? God hates mixture. That's why God's heart is breaking today. That a, that, a, that a senator who would call themselves pro-life would cast a vote for a pro-murderer. And don't candy coat it. Don't put anything sweet on top of it. It's what it is. A pro-life uh, by mouth only in word only but not in deed put his vote and put her vote on a pro-murdering person in our government. Thank you for nine people in the three front rows. God hates mixture. He's tired and, and, and if, you, if I can for just a moment I got to talk to the church. I talk to the world a lot and talk to the church because it's in the church God begins this. He says, the problem is not in the world. The world knows it's got a sinful nature, so it's going to lie, and it's going to have pride, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to shed innocent blood. But what about the church? We want to be great. We want to be mighty. We want to do great things for God. Then let it begin in us, God. Let us begin to be honest, integral, humble. Let us begin to be right and upright and up, upstanding. Well, God understands if I fudge a little bit on your taxes. No, he doesn't. And you're going to pay a price. You're going to reap what you sow. So don't juggle the numbers and try to do this or that to make a few more dollars come in. I'd rather be broke than, and have God than have all the money in the world and go to hell. So God doesn't understand mixture. And Amos, the prophet, spoke about it. He said, God doesn't understand good and evil trying to mix together. Compromise has been in the, infiltrating the church. I felt this very strong because I believe that 2021, 2020 was a very difficult year in a pandemic that, that exposed the church. It exposed the church. It exposed the fear and not the faith. And the remnant rose up in faith. We're one of the only churches in Florida, regardless what all the other preachers say in Florida. We're one of the only churches that never shut down once, that never allowed fear to cap capsize this ship, never allowed anything to stop us. We're one of the only churches. Other churches went online for months and months and months. We're one of the only churches that held fast because we said, God, we're not shutting down for the devil. We're not shutting down for a pandemic. And if your power is not good enough to get us through a virus, then what are we doing serving you anyways? Come on, somebody. We didn't shut down and we didn't shut up. Hallelujah. Mixture. Mixture. Well, I love the Lord, but I'm a little afraid. Mixture. That's what happens when the enemy's allowed to come in and create and sow seeds of compromise in the house of God. And that's what he's done across America. Really? 
Really? Major denominations are now ordaining avid homosexuals. Now understand, I feel, you know what, I shouldn't have to take the time to, to clarify things, but, but I'm going to do it anyways. You'll never find a preacher that loves someone lost in the sin of homosexuality more than me. You'll never find one. You'll never find someone who would embrace a bisexual, transvestite, lesbian. It doesn't matter to me. But it's a mixture that's not glorifying to God. No more than a liar can glorify God or a thief can glorify God or, or, or someone who's, who's full of pride can glorify God. God says good and evil can't mix together. together. Pure and impure cannot mix together. Lies cannot be mixed with truth. And Amos, the prophet of God, if you read his book, you'll find it. In fact, I'm probably going to preach on it a few Wednesday nights. He says God is bringing a plumb line into the church. And the plumb line is going to expose things. And if that makes you nervous, then you need to get right with God. That shouldn't make anybody in this room nervous. You got nothing to be nervous about if you're living right with God. You're on the level. You're, 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 you're right with God. But the plumb line will expose, and that's what Amos said, the plumb line will expose the strange mixture in the house of God. There's an ungodly aroma, and there's a sweet fragrance, and the, the plumb line's going to expose the mixture that's not ordained of God. And watch what begins to happen. So abortion. There's no justification. Well, what about rape? Well, what a tragic thing rape is. Yes, it's the most tragic thing that could ever happen to a young woman. Rape. But if you want to know the reality, let me clarify it for you. That the violent, tragic reality, the traumatic experience has already happened if she's been raped. Carrying the baby is not going to be the most traumatic experience. The rape was traumatic. And the rest of her life will be plagued with guilt and shame and all of those things if she makes the decision to terminate that pregnancy. So what do you do? Let me explain it this way. The violation, the perpetrator needs to go to prison for a long, long time. For a long, long time. The girl, innocent, because rape is, is taking uh, uh, advantage of an innocent girl. The girl needs to be counseled and prayed for. And she needs to know and understand this, that the violation was against her body. The violation was not against her spirit. Because no perpetrator can violate your spirit. Do you understand what I'm saying? I can, I can violate your body by by pointing a gun at you and putting a bullet through you, but I could never violate your spirit. Your spirit is hidden with God. And so her body was violated, but her spirit and her soul, her intellect and emotion and will, are her choice. And she allows, if she allows her spirit to be affected by the rape, or her soul and her emotions... That's where counseling comes in and prayer and the encouragement of the church and says, what happened to you is the greatest violation that could ever happen to a young lady. But the greatest blessing that could ever have happened to you is that it's natural for you to carry a child for nine months. There's hundreds and thousands of families that cannot conceive, that cannot have babies, that cannot give birth. And so we will help you and we will find a family that needs a little baby and, and we, will, we will help you adopt that baby out or, or maybe you'll want and love that baby. Who 
cares about the father, who, the, the, the whatever, the, the thing that fathered it? Who cares about that? The soul will get to heaven hopefully one day. Because mercy is available to everybody. But what about this young girl? Do you kill the baby? Never. Never. Or maybe you came from a church that says, well, in the case of rape, never do we murder a baby. Because God hates it. And if God hates it, we hate it. Amen? Amen. And here's why. Because you know what? If you terminate that pregnancy and, and you say, well, you know, my sister-in-law did it and she told me to do it and she said it was the best thing she ever did. She's telling a lie because she'll be haunted and guilty and condemned and shamed all the rest of her life until she gets set free by the power of God. So if you think carrying the baby for nine months, a blip on the, on the years of your life, and then giving birth to a baby, one of the most wonderful experiences a woman could ever have, uh, is, 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 is traumatic, you're, you're wrong. So you, you carry the baby. What about incest? Same thing. Same thing. You don't ever terminate a baby. It's shedding innocent blood. And it's, and it's against God. God hates it. Amen? Someone say, is there any exception? I'm not Q&A this morning, but if there's, is there any exception? The only exception, the only exception is if medically it can be proven that the mother, the mother's life is in jeopardy. In other words, proven that the mother will lose her life or the baby will lose its life, one of the two. Then in my opinion, the only exception would be that one must be, one must be saved, and it would be best to save the mother. That's my opinion. That's the only exception. If one is going to die, then obviously we would want to keep the mother. And I, you don't have to agree with that. That's just my opinion. You're awful quiet, though. There are penalties for shedding innocent blood. All these precious lives. 30, every 37 seconds, there's penalties. So God views life even before we're in the womb. God sees that life is in the blood. There are penalties for shedding innocent blood. And then what about this? Isaiah said this, Isaiah 45. He said, who gives the clay the right to say to the potter what it will do? Who, who gives the clay the right? You're formed and fashioned by the, by the potter. God himself. Who gives the clay the right? I'm looking down this morning and I had the privilege of celebrating with Katie and Donovan who not only are having one baby, not only having two babies, but they have three babies growing inside her belly right now. three baby boys God help them if they're anything like Donovan God help them no, I'm kidding isn't it precious she's up here singing with a little bump in her belly praising God worshiping God hands that shed innocent blood who gives the, the clay the right can you imagine that even Katie and, and many others who are expecting babies in this church. The clay, you don't have the right to make a decision for those babies. They belong to God. Amen. It's not my body, my choice. It's not your choice, ladies. It's not your body. The Bible says in Corinthians, know you not? That you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You were made by God. It's not your body to make a choice over. It's not your body to, 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 to say, well, I think I'll do this or do that. If it's my body, my choice, then we can't let them put forced vaccinations in us. And we never will. So Isaiah said that, that he is the creator and we are the creation. Amen. So the ultimate question is, is, who's in charge? Who's in charge? Who's in charge of the decision? Who has the authority to make the determination of life? 
You see, sin is so progressive. Sin is so progressive. Here's what happens. And I'm going to close with this. Sin, sin starts with a sin, and, and we sin. So let's talk about the sin of shedding innocent blood. The sin of shedding innocent blood. We, we shed the innocent blood of a baby inside the womb of a mother. And, and you know what? That's the, the greatest atrocity that could ever happen. But it doesn't stop there, does it? Because sin is never satisfied. Sin never stops. Sin will keep advancing. And so what begins to happen is then they say, wait a minute, we can make some money off this. We can abort and sell a liver of a little baby or, or, the, or, the, or the organs of a little baby. We can do, the, and I don't need to be graphic, but I'm telling you what happens. We can make money off of this because money is the God of America. And we can make money off of this. And they begin to sell. And if that's not enough, guess what they can begin to say? And they're already trying to do it. They're trying to say, okay, well, if we are allowed to take babies uh, from the mother's womb and murder them, then why not those who are older in life that have uh, diseases and illnesses and they don't want to live anymore so we'll just terminate them who's in charge a doctor who's in charge a medical professional who's in charge some 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 bozo the clown in washington who has no value of life governor in in virginia the state of virginia advocates not only pre pre-birth abortion but post-birth abortion who's in charge you say well pastor what are we what are we supposed to do we're supposed to rise up we're supposed to be the army of god we're supposed to be the voice of the bible we're supposed to be the ones who are declaring and decreeing this is the way of the lord walk ye in it we declare righteousness we're so, you, if you lift up the standard of jesus the bible says where righteousness prevails the city will be blessed hallelujah Because the more you sin, the more you want to sin. And the more you do, the more babies inside the womb that are murdered, the more babies that will be murdered. But thank God for a church that will let our voice be heard and say enough is enough. This is what God is saying. I'm done, but I'm going to hear this. This is what God is saying. There's a divine plumb line coming 2021. 2021. Write that down. 2021. Divine plumb line. Amos prophesied there's a divine plumb line. Get ready. You know when he said it's going to happen? It's going to happen in the time of harvest. The time of harvest. The summer. The season of harvest. Watch this. Matthew 13, verse 30. The Bible describes the sowing uh, or the wheat and the tares growing together. You maybe have read this story before. Where the wheat grows in the field. The wheat is getting ready for harvest. In fact, the Bible says it's white already under harvest. The church is coming alive. We've come through 2020. We've come through the pandemic. We've come through this atrocity. We, we, the, the true church, I think, is rising up in faith and strength. And the remnant is coming alive. And then we read Matthew 13, 13. It says, the tares and the wheat, they grow together. I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to, I'm here to bring you into a greater life of victory than ever before. I'm not here to put you down. I don't condemn. God convicts. God loves. God forgives. God draws. I'm not here to do that. I'm just telling you, there's great things ahead if you'll just listen to what I'm saying. God's got the greatest blessings of your life if you'll just listen. And God is saying that we're getting very close to the day when the wheat and the tares are growing together. Why did God allow the tares to grow in the wheat? Why did the farmer not walk through the field? Because you can see the wheat, and then the tear grows above it. Why didn't he just pull out the tares? They're less than the wheat. Why didn't he get rid of them? God said, just let them grow together. He says, and we'll deal with it in the time of harvest. He says, we'll deal with it in the time of harvest. What does that mean? It means that very soon in this year, I believe it's this year. I believe this year, God is saying, it's harvest time. 